All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get into our warm up, our, our mobility section, which is gonna be a unique look at how to warm up, highlighting the use of the bag. And look who we have here. The Steel Maze Gypsy, my partner in crime, has joined up to help bring you guys some top notch education in the hydro core. Now, this is a unique experience, although Serena has worked with the hydro core under my coaching uh, she's going to be going through the certification just like you guys so as serena goes through the techniques we'll have a chance to coach and improve her technique serena's going to be doing a great job during this education of bringing us the static movements giving water a place to rest uh, also the fluid movements i think i'm going to do most of the crashing but you can crash my party so <laughs> All right, guys, uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some hip mobility. Now, something I like to do, uh, this is with all my students, I like to give them something they're familiar with before I introduce them to something new. So, Serene, let's go ahead and take the center stage here. I'm just gonna lay the bag off to the side. And normally when we warm up uh, in any fitness system, we warm up our arms, we warm up our legs, but from time to time we can neglect our spine. So this next part is going to be about awakening your spine. All right, now guys, we're gonna need your mobility knowledge that we're putting through this section to help cue you. When I am going to ask you later to tilt your hips at a certain angle, you can refer back to this module to give you more reference for what we're talking about. All right, so Serena, let's start off by doing just a simple uh, standing structure. All right, guys, so we're gonna stand with our feet facing straight. We'll get, go ahead and lock your legs. And then unlock them just like a micro bend. And when I say micro bend, I'm talking like a one to two inch bend in the knees. From there, I want you to gently tear the floor apart. Not much because I want your hips to be extremely active as we tilt our hips forward and tilt our hips behind us. All right, so we're tucking in our tailbone and untucking. What I want you to focus on is your spine relatively being still. And then just at one point in your body, there is the spine moving front to back. All right, so this is kind of standard. And usually when we warm up the hips with the tucks, we also do the tilt. So Serena, let's do the inside closed tilt. So we're gonna have our hands to our hips, you know, a, an inch or two away, boom. And then we don't wanna bump our hands with our hips, right? So this isn't the hips going side to side, but rather one hip lifting and one hip dropping down, right? So as you go through those things left to right, the hands don't touch the hips and it's just like that. Super easy, super efficient. And then Serena, do me a favor. Let's just connect all those things and let's draw the hips in a circle. And make that as smooth as you can. So we moved from a static forward side, back side into fluid, meaning nice and smooth. All right, guys, uh, we tucked the hips and you know we do that, that's kind of the normal thing we do to warm up, but let's go ahead and highlight the use of the bag for our hip tucks and tilts. All right, Serena, the first position we're going to get into is our knee on belly position. Anybody who's taken jujitsu, this is a position I got right from my time spent in the martial arts gym. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay the bag on the floor like so. All right, Serena, I'm gonna go ahead and steal just a little bit of your space. From here, I'm gonna put my knee on the belly of the bag, and I'm going to put my other leg, just like I'm doing a lunge. This time, I'm just off of the ground. This will be our knee on belly position. All right, Serena, let's go ahead and have you get to the knee on belly. All right, and what did we go through? We went through a little bit of hip mobility, tucking the hips back and forth. All right, guys, so the bag, it compresses. Watch this, as I push into the bag, it lifts Serena up. As I let go of the bag, she drops down. So there's a certain factor of stability that goes in with your mobility. So a two for one punch. And guys, this feels like lifting weights. This is work. From here, Serena, I want you to tuck your hips in and out. Yes. And what I want you to focus on is when the hips go forward, the knee drives down into the bag. Yes. And very good. Boom. And all right, so let's go ahead and stand up and let's just do the other side so we get everything in. All right. So Serena's doing a good job of getting settled into a position and having a nice lunge both in the front and the back and again, tilting the hips from front to back. 
Now you want to be careful on your placement on the knee because you don't want the bag to roll over. So I'd like to go middle, almost towards the front of the bag with those tilts. Serena, let's go ahead and stand up. And I'm gonna rearrange the bag to where it's facing the camera, just so we get the best view. All right, and let's go ahead and face the camera, face our students, and then go on to your knee on belly again. All right, instead of tucking forward and back, let's tuck side to side. And then the same thing, as the hip goes down, the knee goes down into the bag, compress the bag, yes, very good. And then we'll go ahead and stand up. We'll switch sides. We'll go forward to back. Driving the knee into the bag. Then of course, side to side. One more. Serena, great job breathing on the exercises. You can't ask for a better rhythm than if you can get your student uh, to breathe, all right? So great job inhaling, exhaling. And so for my students who do hip mobility, and we've done this before, but we have our knee on the ground, this can be uncomfortable. So not only do you get more of a challenge, getting to challenge stability, putting the buoyant bag, the bag that compresses underneath the knee, but the isolation of having to keep everything still as you rotate the hips forward and back, side to side. So we've got the hips warmed up just a little bit. What I would like to do is I'd like to get a little deeper into the hips. We're going to do a knee on belly transition, but this time I'm going to be more active with my hips. Serena, I'm gonna go ahead and demo this one. I'm just gonna face the back sideways like this. All right, guys, this goes from our knee on belly position. I'm gonna sit my butt back. My elbows are tight to my body. My hands go down to the horns. And it's from this position that my back is not hunched, but my belly button is tucked in, much like I'm going to do a type of row. From here, I can compress into the bag a little bit, and what happens when I push my hands into the bag? It lifts me up, so it's, it's almost spring-loaded, if you will. As my hands go down into the bag, I can switch myself around to the other side, and that is the knee on belly transition. Once I've done my knee on belly transition, I'm going to be aggressive with my hips. We're going to be doing a lot of hinging. So I want you, as your hips go behind you, to tilt them back. And as we stand up or we go to our kneeling position, core tight, engage the hips. So again, we're using that tilt and tuck to fire off our hinge. Hands go back, hips go up. I'm gonna transition each side. Serena, let's go ahead and have you give it a go. And I'm just gonna face the camera, or I'm sorry, face the bag this way. All right, let's go. Sit back, tuck the tailbone behind, hands on the horns. Now guys, I like the grip where my fingers go to the side and my thumb maybe is on top or, some, or wraps around a little bit. And you're welcome to squeeze here, all right? Don't let your fingers run straight, but rather wrap around. This is a good position. Do you feel comfortable? Yes. Okay. From here, let's just start by doing the hip drive. We'll go hips start tucking in, hands come off the bag, squeeze the core, tuck the hips in. And let's just do a few reps just like that, nice and static. So Serena's exhaling on the effort. Very good. Last one. All right, now let's have you transition to the other side. So both hands down, skip around. And he goes to the other side. Way to land in just a perfect position. And, and you notice that Serena took a second to get stable before she drove her hips. Now we start picking up the breathing cue. Very good. Exhale, hips come forward. Exhale, very good. All right, Serena, keep going, but this time I want you to transition between each rep. Hips up, hips around. Hips up, hips around. Hips up, hips around. And you got three more. Three, two, and one. All right, good job. So I got a little bit more into the hips. Uh, and now this warm up, we're going to continue to open up the hips a lot. We're gonna need it. 
All right, so Serena, this one will be super easy, and it's not gonna take a lot of coaching. Uh, we'll just take you right through it. Let's go ahead and go knee on belly. Now the object here is to drive the knee as far forward as you can. So this is gonna help open up our ankle, it's gonna help open up our hip, and then definitely in the back. So knee goes forward. Very good, bring it all the way back. We'll try and keep our heel on the floor. And just for fun's sake, let's transition to the other side. Hips, drive the knee, and back. And so, of course, we're adding the switch in here to try to get the heart rate up a little bit as we warm up. Serena is putting the transition with the big hip drive into the knee drive. We'll go three more. Three. Two. And one. That was some good work. All right, well, we're gonna open up the hips a little bit more of an angle. And Serena, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock these ones out. Guys, this is gonna be the same gig. Instead of being in my kneeling stance with the knee on belly, I'm gonna take my feet and angle it at about 45 degrees. And from there, I'm gonna open up my abductors and go as far as I can. I'm gonna use my toes to press back in, reset myself, hands on horns, now guys, as you sit back with this angle, you're going to feel it a lot more in the groin, and hey, that's a good thing. So let's take our time sitting back, opening up that inside line. I'm going to switch to the angle, open up, drive. I do my best to set my angle at first so uh, you know we can start getting the heart rate up and make our mobility a bit of an exercise. All right, so uh, really taking care of the hips here and, and uh, let's go into another one. Okay, now this one can be do, done two different ways. There's not a right way. Guys, this is a guide of foundations that you're going to use to add to your toolbox to make more extensive, expansive movement. All right, Serena, let's just without the bag, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Let's go into a pigeon, and we'll go ahead and face this way. Very good. All right, hey, beautiful. So we're gonna take something we've used before, and then we'll go ahead and add it to the bag. Serena, let's go ahead and stand up. All right, now this can be done one of two ways. We're gonna experiment a little bit. We've been working with the horns away from the body. This time, we're going to work with the horns towards the body. All right, so Serena, let's go ahead and get into a pigeon from this position. And we'll go actually go hands on the floor. Sure. Yeah, and then let's take the knee and put it on top of the bag. How neat, the horn supports the ankle and now you've lifted the floor. And guys, if you're on one of these hard floors, putting your knee and your ankle into the mat and then asking for extension can be difficult. Uh, but having this nice bag underneath you helps cushion the blow and then of course asks you for stability. All right, Serena, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get off the back real quick. Very good, and then we'll reverse. And so this time we can go hands on horns. Now, since the hands are, of course, higher than they were earlier, this is gonna be a lot more comfortable for our student. Now, Serena, this is gonna be beautiful. You've got your hands on the horns. You can alternate from left side to right side in your pigeon. Notice how Serena goes to her toe, to her plank position, and then brings her knee up and through. And Serena does this beautiful thing. Go ahead, keep moving. She's flowing into position and then she's still. And you'll notice that the water in the bag is moving. So the more precise Serena can be, the less movement in the water. Not only that, it's extremely silent. Very good. And then let's just do one last one. Beautiful, and all done there. 
Okay, okay, okay. Hey, we just got a few more to go. And this is where the bag really starts to get interesting. All right, we're going to learn a new grip. Uh, I used to wrestle in high school and we learned this grip called the gable grip. We're gonna learn that now. Put your hands like so, thumbs attached to your finger, your index finger. Now put your palms together. Wrap your fingers over your thumb and wrap your fingers over your pinky. And so all your fingers are together. This is called a gable grip. So we're gonna step over to the center right here. All right, now the way this works is the more I pull, the tighter the fingers get on each other. So the gable grip is like the ultimate wrestling grip. All right, we're going to pick the bag up and hold it in what we like to call a compression grip, where we're holding the bag with compression rather than with our hands. Serena is going to hold the bag, and let's go ahead and do the logo out. And Serena's gonna put her elbows into the bag and squeeze, and also do her cable grip. All right, Serena, let's go ahead and check that out. Now, maybe a little difficult to see, but there is this line, this divider from Serena crushing the bag. So I know as a coach, there's a clear indicator that there's some isometric tension happening. Now, we talked about this a little bit before, but when the horns are at the bottom, the water can distribute unevenly. So there's more water in the right than there is in the left, and that's okay. All right, so Serena, we're going to do the seated hip roots. We'll go ahead and sit towards the left, hips all the way out to the side. And what Serena's focusing on is pouring the water gently from one side to the next. Go ahead and keep waiting until the water gets all the way there. We'll come up and pause just for a second. Ah, it's not even again. What should we do? We should get the water to the other side. Now the water initially is gonna wanna dump all the way over and crash. Serena's doing everything she can to be calm. Now you don't have to empty all of the water out. Depending on the level of water you have, you might not be able to completely empty your glass. Now there's this beautiful sound that's happening. You can hear the water calmly and patiently drop into the other side. That's pretty smooth, very good. All right, and let's go last one. Now what you're seeing is the weight push down into one side and ask the hip for a little bit more room and time. Very good. Let me take the bag from you. Man, I want to do a couple of those. Those look, <laughs> those look good. All right, guys. So that is taking care of your hips. All right, we're going to move up the spine a little bit and we're going to think about the thoracic, okay? So we've got into the balls and sockets of the hips. We've even pressed on the knees and the toes a little bit. Let's move up the spine just a little bit. All right, we're going to introduce them to a compression grip with the horns going up. I'm going to hold the bag, horns going up, and if you look at it, the bag is kind of a wedge. It expands as you go to the edges. So your hands, you don't really need to crush the bag, but if you just set them in a position where the bag wedges in between them, it's very easy to hold the bag. So I don't want you to cause a lot of stress with your upper body, but just let the bag sit in between your arms. I'm going to have a straight line from my elbow all the way to my index finger and from my elbow to my shoulder. So everything's nice and straight, okay? And then from this position, I'm going to focus on the water, not moving erratically from side to side, but being still. I'm going to stand with my feet facing straight, my knees softly bent, my hips tucked in, and I'm going to squeeze my glutes a little bit so I have a little, so I have a little bit more foundation. I'm going to keep my upper body loose and I'm going to transition my weight all the way over the right side of my foot, floating my ribs over my hips, and then also on the other side. Serena, let's go ahead and get you to do a couple reps. Very good. All right, so Serena's got the horns, horns up. She's got her hands wrapped around the bag. And I'm gonna do this. Go ahead, Serena, keep going. Serena is keeping her hips still and then gliding her ribs over her hips. And what are we focused on as coaches? The water maintaining a nice straight level. Serena, don't do a good job. 
So <laughs> you can right away, you can see the bag telling you, okay, st stop doing a bad job. You can tell that the bag is telling you as a coach, hey, look at me, I, I need help with my movement. All right, so we move the, the or, or, I'm sorry, our spine side to side. Let's move our spine forward and back, and let's go ahead and face this way. All right, so Serena's job is to keep the bag as still as possible. All right, so she's got the compression, the water is settled, and we're going to press our spine out of our back. <sighs> Exhale all the air out that you can get, where you can get a little bit more room and then inhale. <sighs> and drive the spine and chest as far forward as you can. Going back, notice how the bag is staying still and forward. Very good. <sighs> yep. Yep. All right, and let's just face the camera for one last one. All right, we moved side to side, front to back. Let's move in a circle. All right, and definitely a lot more challenge in finding stability for the water to sit still. All right, hey, don't worry about this being perfect, but the pursuit of perfection is, is where the real magic happens. Beautiful, beautiful. And did you switch directions? There it is, there it is, there it is. All right, and how are your arms? Your arms good? Uh, pretty good, feeling a little toasty. Okay, well we're- Compressing. This is good, because that, what does that tell us? Hey, we're warming up the arms, all right? So from here, let's get back into our grip, if you can. And then let's work on the neck, all right? So we're gonna let the bag drag our shoulders down as much as we can and back. So we can make as much room for the neck as possible. And we're gonna jut our chin. Our chin's gonna go as far forward as we can and then as far back as we can. And you guys already know what we're looking for. We're looking for the motion in the ocean. Yes, is the water moving? Oh, it seems very calm to me. That looks, that looks very, yeah. <laughs> and then of course, if you start doing a bad job, it shows you, all right. And then Serena, all right, so the water's moving forward and back mostly because that's what the body's doing. So now that we're gonna shift laterally, well, what are we looking for the water to do? Well, it's probably gonna wanna slosh left to right. So taking some time, isolating, and then we really wanna make sure that the bag is maybe an inch away from the body. Boom. Shoulders pulling down and back, shifting side to side. Yep. Yep, looking good. I've been practicing mobility for a while. Every time I put this bag into my hands, it always challenges me a little bit more. And then let's do a circle. So forward, side, back, side, all the way around. That's it? Oh no, she didn't. <laughs> and then switch directions. <laughs> and time. So guys, as, a, as your coach, it's hard to see uh, the right angle all the time. I'm a 360 degree coach. When my students are doing movement, I orbit them because from one angle, it looks like I'm doing a pretty good job. But then as I reveal the side, you'll see that the belly of the bag is, it's on my belly. And so I'm not really warming up my shoulders to their full potential, right? And we're gonna dig into them here in a second. So keeping the bag away from you, it gives you a much better rate of defining true success. Okay, Serena, that's just about it. We're gonna hit the, bat, the floor for one more move. Guys, I spent 30 minutes doing this one time, all right? I've just absolutely fell in love with it. You guys spend as much time as you want on here. Serena, we're gonna get into a position we call the front rack. I'm gonna hold the bag, and I like to go logo facing away. That way, whatever I lay on my shoulders is nice and clear, okay? So I'm gonna be in this racked position, right on? And from here, what you'll notice, there's this beautiful thing that happens. There is a line running across the back, and I can use that as an indicator to see if my water is level. So Serena, I want you to look through the back, okay? It's a very neat thing to close off your vision from everything around you and then just focus on how stable you're being. All right, so from that position of the front rack, you are going to be doing a shin box from left side 
to right side. Now guys, you notice that my hands are behind me and that's what is helping me transition. If you don't have access to a shin box with your hands on the floor, and this is definitely an upgrade, all right? I would like to shin box from side to side. Now, Serena, you notice I'm pushing my arms out in front of me? I'm doing that so I can find a little bit more stability. Well, having the bag in front of you is going to counterweight. What's wanting to happen here is I'm wanting to fall back. As soon as I extend my arms, ah, my posture's back. I'll bend one knee in, bend one knee out, and this knee's a little funky, so what I do is I pull my hip behind me, or my heel behind me. So there is a repositioning of the foot. Now, that's just my hip. You may or may not have to do that. We're gonna do this two different ways. One, rolling from side to side. And then two, adding a little bit more of an extension of the hips. And we're gonna do that with the hydro core. All right, Serena, you ready? All right, so Serena's gonna get in the stable platform. We're gonna go ahead and put the bag on the shoulder. Uh -huh. Serena is gonna hold the handles right on. This is the first time we've held the handles. You can go thumbs underneath, perfect. All right, and from here, Serena, go ahead and take it away. Hold that for a second. Guys, you gotta have your students keep an eye on the water. So once they get into position, have them hold, inhale. Exhale, focus on the water, transition. Whenever I do shin boxes, it's really hard to see what's happening with everything. All you can do is fill. But with this new addition of this leveling system or this leveling shelf, you can really identify where the kinks are. Every time I roll my left knee over, there's a jump in the water. When I roll my right knee over, it's smooth as ice. So what does that tell the coach? Well, it tells you what you need to work on. And then Serena, do you feel comfortable going into a standing shin box? Ah, what happened to the water? A big jump in motion. So once you've nailed the shin box transition from left side to right side, if you'd like to add the standing shin box, you're welcome. And do everything you can to help keep the water straight as can be. You can see that Serena's releasing the tension from her fingers. It's a beautiful thing. And let's just do one more. Hey, I'm just gonna grab that from you. <laughs> Delivery, <laughs> all right. All right, so uh, Serena, we got into the hips pretty well. We warmed up the spine a little bit. You took a deep breath, all right. All right, and um, all right, so let's talk about going through each one of those. For me, I do a mobility exercise until I notice an increase in speed. I move at a naturally slow pace. Remember, we talked about being static. Well, what happens when the static movement is practiced enough? It becomes fluid. Yes, fluid, fluid, fluid. And so you would say static is kind of like moving like a robot, and then fluid is what happens when that robot comes to life and starts animating. So I look for an increase in natural speed. I don't try and go faster. It just happens. All right, do your exercises go through them, look for that increase in speed. For me, I'm at about the three to five range. So I'll do three, or five, three to five reps and I start to notice that increase in speed. Now, when you find the increase in speed, I want you to hang on to it for a bit. I like each one of these modules to be done for 90 seconds to two full minutes. All right, next thing we're gonna get into, oh. We're not gonna use the bag to warm up. We're gonna use a part of the bag to warm up. Let me set this to the side. Aha, the ropes. Well, Serena, we haven't warmed up the shoulders, the elbows, the fingers. So let's get into that. And we're gonna use our bolo or our nunchuck, which we fashioned out of our ropes. 
uh, to get warmed up. All right, so Serena, I'm gonna go ahead and go through these first, and then I'll have you go through them second, okay? So the first grip we're going to learn is called our finger grip. So we're gonna warm up the fingers. I'm gonna hold the pommel on the lighter side of the grip. So my fingers are not going to be on the inside of the rope, but rather the outside. This is more difficult than it looks. My other side, I'm gonna hold the same thing. Now from here, I'm going to lock out my arms. I'm going to go into my standing structure, straight feet, soft knees, hips tucked in. I'm gonna squeeze my abs extra tight. I'm gonna pull my shoulders down and back and make my spine as long as I can through my C-spine. From here, I'm going to grip and physically just, I'm gonna try and tear it apart. After I've done the finger, I'm going to go into the palms. I'm going to pull the globe into my palms. My fingers are wrapped all the way around, and again, I'm going to pull. From there, I go to the fingers, pull, globes, pull. Now what I feel instantly, when I'm on the fingertips, I feel the inside line of my arms. When I grip with the palm and pull, I feel more of the outside of my arms, all right? And what you're gonna find is that the fingertip grip is a lot harder than the palm grip. Okay, ripping apart. I like ripping stuff apart. Serena, let's give it a try. All right. Okay, so actually, there's this middle line. We're gonna take our fingers outside. Yeah, there, right there, boom, in that third section. All right, <laughs> pull apart. Relax, pull in to your palms, wrap all your fingers around. There you go, just like that, and pull. So guys, I want you to pay attention to what's happening, and you can switch back and forth, that seems like you are. Very good, yep, yep. What you guys can see happening is the fingers are communicating with the palm. This is a beautiful warm-up. All right, uh, Serena, which one of those is your most secure grip? So fingers and palm. Fingers and palm. Okay, got to put the palm on. All right, Serena, hey, time for a fun partner workout. Which hand are you strongest with? Right hand. All right, hold the globe in your right hand. I'm going to hold the globe in my right hand, and we're both going to hold on to the fingertip grip. All right, say when. When. Go. <laughs> so a fun game that you can play with your friends is a little game of tug of war. And guys, ever since I started focusing on the grip on the outside, uh, it has really awakened the strength in my fingers. Not just my hands, uh, but my fingers, okay? Uh, Serena, let's go ahead and get into a plank position. Ah, right hand is gonna grab the globe. Ah, and fingertip grip. Ah, pull. You got me. All right, so hey, use your imagination, but something you can do, just creative, fun workouts. All right, so we've already identified that holding with the palm and the fingers is the grip. Let's go ahead and take back center stage. We'll go ahead and get into our palm grip, not our fingertip grip. Let's lock your arms out. Nice, and now we're just gonna roll the shoulders. We're gonna take the shoulders and roll them back. Now, once you've programmed what we call anti-rotation or ripping apart, it tends to stick. What you can tell, since the knot is tied and there is no slack, that Serena's doing what? She's applying tension. Roll your shoulders forward. Very good. Arms are locked. We're still pulling apart. Very good. Shoulder circles going forward. Shoulder circles going back. And then, of course, locking our arms. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is uh, paint the fence. Now, this is a different grip. We call this our oak. OK grip. Our OK, if we're telling somebody OK, we put our index finger and our thumb together and we're actually going to do that on the rope. Our other fingers are going to splice. <sighs> From here, what I'd like for you to do is paint the fence. Palms go down, wrists go up, and then back down. <sighs> Painting the fence. Well, if you look, this is, uh, well, it's a pool. Serena is adding a little bit of anti-rotation, just keeping the arms nice and locked. Very good. Last one. Boom. 
Okay, let me go ahead and grab that from you. I told you Serena was going to demonstrate the static. And if you notice, that static movement became a beautiful uh, fluid movement. I'm going to add a little bit more fluid or flow. And then we're going to crash. When I think of crashing, I think of waves. I think of waves hitting the beach hard. Uh, and so whenever we think of crashing, we're going to think of creating waves. Makes sense. We're working with water. Waves are powerful. All right. So starting off in my paint the fence, the first wave I'm going to make is with my heels. As I lift my wrist up, my heels come up. Well, all this weight wants to come down, so I let it. Up, down, up, down. Very good. Now, waves roll. The next wave I'm going to make is in my rope. I'm going to let the wave bend. So now my hands are rolling up and down just a bit. And you'll start to see a wave going through my spine. You know what this reminds me of? Battle ropes. I mean, I'm holding on to the battle ropes. I go to my heels. I lift the battle rope up, up as much as I can. And what do I do? I crash it like a wave. Boom! Got to get the wave up. Flow. Crash. Flow. Crash. And Serena, you see how I'm changing my grip? I am bending the rope. I am making a wave in the rope. Flat. Wave. Flat. Wave. All right, Serena, let's just give this a try. Yeah. Let's face sideways. Very good. All right. Arms go up. Now right here, we start to float our heels. Arms are all the way up, flick the wrist. Everything comes down, bend the rope. That's it. Straight and bend. <sighs> now I want you to think this, big belly, big booty. <sighs> big belly, big booty. Yep, keep going. Yep. And so now there is a wave of flow and a wave of crashing going through the body and time. Guys, we call that warming up the wave. Warming up the wave. Give me the nunchucks. <laughs> All right, why do we call them nunchucks? Well, this next section. All right, we're going to warm up the elbows. We're going to warm up the lats just a bit. We're going to go to our OK grip. Who do I look like? Leo. <laughs> Might remind you of the world famous Bruce Lee. Guys, check it out. We're going to drop our right hand under. And it's okay if you twist the knot. I'm going to bring my hand across and bring my elbow straight up. Now, it might not be completely straight, but my angle, I'm reaching for straight. While my elbow is going up, I'm going to use my back hand to pull down just a little bit. Nunchucks go out. My elbow goes in and up. Out, let go, and up, out and up, out, and up. You want to give it a try? All right, let's do it. Nunchucks. All right, fingers out. Very good. We're going to bring our arm over, under, and straight up. Let's just bring the elbow down, elbow up. So if you guys are having problems with this, and remember, you're in badass nunchuck position, and then the elbow goes up, to down. From here, we're going to go both palms facing out, back to our grip. Boom. From there, left hand goes in, right hand goes over, left elbow goes up. And while we're here, we can use our bottom hand to pull and lift that elbow just a bit. Out. And up. Out. And up. Guys, what are we looking for? an increase in natural speed. We're looking for an increase in natural fluid mechanics. And we'll be able to tell that Serena has fully taken in this lesson when she starts to breathe. Yep.
last one. And let me have the nunchucks back, please. Nice hand. All right, so our elbows go up. And now our elbows are going to go in a circle. My hand is going to come all the way in. My elbow is going to come all the way in, all the way up, and then all the way out. So my elbow is no longer facing straight, but facing out. Guys, you have to worry about the arch of the elbow. If you pay, focus the hand going in, elbow making a big half circle. All right, so now we're really digging into the ball and socket of the shoulder. I'm not really rotating my torso that much, but I can get a little bit more room if I lean towards. The focus I want you guys to have is square chest. Out and under. Guys, you notice that I'm looking towards the elbow? I would love it if you guys did the same. Now you'll notice my fingers are doing what? They're reaching for the direction I'm pulling in. In, out. Serena. Boom, arms are out. Let's take our right elbow in, just like we were. Yeah, and now bring the elbow all the way across, all the way up, and all the way out. We have our eyes on the prize. From there, elbow goes up, hand goes back, elbow goes in, palms go out. Think about the left elbow circling in and out. Very good. And then you just get some breath in there. Take your time. Don't worry about speeding up. Let your body take it in. Focus on your breathing. Focus on creating minimal tension in the ropes. Very good. Nicely done. Let's do three more. Three. Two. And one time. All right. Hey, so we got into the shoulders. You know, you can really magnify the tension by as much tension as you put in the rope. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these ropes are adjustable. So the length of the rope may affect your ability to get into position. Uh, I'm five foot eight, so my ropes are a specific size. And we'll talk a little bit more about that just a little bit later in the program. But if you're having trouble, remember, you can manage the length of these ropes. Easy stuff. All right, next one, silly. It's a lot of fun. I tend to goof it up a bit, but we're going to warm up the wrist. Now, we do a lot of swinging, and I don't want you to think so much of battle ropes, but I want you to think of the other rope, uh, the jump rope. We're going to simply hold on to the pommel and swing under. Very easy. So, hey, I can squeeze the crap out of this, and my wrist doesn't move very much, or I can keep a loose grip, and now my wrist is rolling. You know, Serena, when I tell my students to do wrist rolls, they, they don't pay any attention. But when I put something in their hand and I trick them into doing wrist rolls, they're really into it. So I'm going under and over. All right, one thing we can do to amplify power in the hydrocore system is to add waves. I'm going to make that same wave by lifting my heels and driving force up and then of course pulling down into the floor for my final pull to add motion to my spins. This is easy. Just pretend you're jump roping. I'm going to hold and circle under and I'm going to start to jog my heels. You can even leave the floor if you want. But what's happening is I'm projecting our funneling energy from the floor all the way through my arm and I'm in a sense whipping. So we have over, under, and we'll do that with both hands. All right, so first we'll start static, okay, and from here we'll start under. Very good, keep going. Guys, when you move the bag, it is going to have enough tension in it that the water is on one side. So swinging the rope with the pommel on the end is a very unique feeling of creating tension through centrifugal force. Serena, while you're doing that, put your other hand out, your left hand and mimic that you're doing a jump rope, and now let's start jogging your heels off of the floor. We'll try and keep the toes down, just the heels. Yeah, and time. Let's go. 
So did you notice an increase in force? So once you start pumping the legs, you have to keep up, okay? So let's go ahead, we swung under, let's swing over. And whenever you're ready, add some power. Excellent breathing. All right, let's go ahead and switch hands. All right, for most of you, whenever you get over to the left hand, I just want you to be patient, okay? My left hand doesn't work like my right hand does, all right? Let's go ahead, we got the under. All right, so the under works real well, and then we add the waves, the legs start getting into it. All right, swinging forward, legs down, adding the legs. And if you're having trouble, just act like both hands are working. That really helps. It helps, right? And time. So guys, you can do two things. You can do wrist rolls, or you can just put the globe in your hand. All right, so we did outside under. We're now going to do an inside and an outside swing. All right, so the wrist, whenever we're pushing and pulling, it's going to need to figure eight. Watch this, I go outside, Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. In. And now my chest is going to also figure eight. <sighs> this is me moving with the water, and then this is me controlling the water. How do I speed things up? Add some legs. <laughs> Add some legs. All right, so again, we have one in or one out, one in. One out, one in, out, in, out, in. Now you're really gonna, look at my pinky. You see how my pinky is all the way turning over? It's like my pinky is leading the race. Now I do this on my left arm because my left arm just doesn't operate the same way my right does. And then of course we can add a little speed in there. All right, hey, so you know, we don't need to demo that one, but the wrists are nice and loose and what, this, why this is important, you're swinging hard. Your fingers are able to hang on to the globe. So this is a great way to teach connection with holding on to the globes, the pommels, when you're swinging the hydro core. All right, guys, our warm up is over. It's time to start learning the hydro core education. When we get back into chapter two, I want you guys to have your bag, no ropes on it, and we'll get started there.